All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Mark Hunter, who is up in Omaha, Nebraska. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing good with a backup computer, backup camera, backup. Hey, but I'm still the real guy. So what the <laughs> heck, right? Right? Yeah. So for those of you who, I mean, a lot of you know Mark, the sales hunter. But for those of you who may not, um, you know, Mark has been around the, uh, has been around sales consulting for many, many years and has written a number of books. And what we want to do today is actually focus on one of those books, which is called High Profit Pros Prospecting, right? So before we came on air, Mark and I were just talking a little bit about, you know, now's the time of year when obviously everybody's, you know, scrambling to bring in business, but you got to, you got to fill your pipeline for Q1 as well. So not to have that big end of the year and then the dip in January and like have nothing. And we're also discussing the idea of, you know, over the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about inbound and pros cold calling and prospecting is dead. But, you know, Mark, you wrote the book, High Profit Prospecting. Tell us why that that idea of prospecting and outbound and cold calling is not dead and, in fact, is more important than ever. Well, it's more important than ever because the world is more cluttered than ever. There's so many message systems out there that unless you can really go one on one with somebody, you have little chance of succeeding. And this is why I think outbound is actually more important than ever, because he, here's the other thing. If, if we truly believe in the outcome we can help people mm -hmm. with, I mean, you know, you, you truly believe in what you can deliver to companies. Sure. You owe it to people to get in touch with them. Mm -hmm. And if you just sit there and, well, I'm just going to wait for the phone to ring. I'm just going to wait for inbound email to come in. No, you will. You will. Bad bad salespeople have very hungry children. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Okay. Let's just, <laughs> let's just kind of leave it at that. And, but that's what happens. And this whole thing, prospecting doesn't have to be the, oh no, you can't, you can't do that. It's not, it's not, no, because there are so many tools that allow us to really kind of move beyond cold calling to really be what I call informed calling, mm -hmm. um, that, that I can reach out to people and have conversations, meaningful conversations, because here's the other thing that's changed about prospecting. It used to be that when you would cold call, this was a this was a information dump where you had mm -hmm. to tell that person, no, no, now it's not, you're not telling them anything. You're engaging them. That's the big shift. And that's the big shift in the prospecting world. Yeah. And, and part of it, I think, too, is um, we're also we're perceived, we perceive that we're also busy. I mean, I, I'm today busier than ever. I, I tend to think of it, we're more distracted than ever because we have more distractions at our fingertips and we can, you know, there's things flying everywhere and we can go, ooh, look at that. Um, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so the fact is, if you're going to reach somebody, you can't just be one and done. You can't just blast an email. I mean, you have to, you have to find, timing is often of the essence, right? And you have to find the right moment to connect with that person, you know, when they're open for a conversation. Well, you know, you, you hit again on something. It's the right message to the right person at the right time. Now, we've heard that phrase before. I think what it is, it's the right question right. to the right person at the right time. Think about that. Mm -hmm. That, to me, that's when you do that, that's the sweet spot of prospecting. So when you say the right question, give me, give me some um, examples of what you have seen the right question at the right time. Well, the right question is engaging you. You know, I know what industry you're in. So mm -hmm. what's the question? What's the piece that that I can ask you about right off the bat, right when I get you on the phone, that's going to engage you in a conversation? Because think about this. If I if you call me and, and I it's funny, I've had three different sales. I, I love answering the phone. I can't mm -hmm. stand it because it's pathetic salespeople. I've had three pathetic salespeople call me today. And each one just kind of like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> and guess what? I hung up on them. But now if you engage me with a question, then guess what? You're now asking for my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remain engaged with you. Now, it's not going to be 100 percent, sure, but I'm going to have a lot higher percentage than the stupid wah, wah, wah. And, and do you believe part of that is, I mean, say those guys who called you today, you know, fundamentally, do you think they really believed you were going to talk to them or that they really believed that they were going to be able to engage with you? It sounds like they just were like, well, there's another one. Check that one off. I made my 50 calls today. 
Oh, without a doubt. One person said, yeah, I'm looking for the owner of the sales hunter. And I said, speaking. <laughs> and he was like, huh, huh, huh? <laughs> now, now, first of all, the owner of the sales hunter, excuse me, yeah. if, if you did any kind of research, you know that this is the epitome of a small <laughs> business, okay? <laughs> Clearly, they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you know, you're getting self-fulfilling prophecies. So in your book, you talk about preparing for prospecting success and like planning for high profit customers. So what is that? What does that preparation look like? Well, the preparation begins with two things. One, the, the most difficult sale you'll ever make is right here mm-hmm. in your head. Do you believe? And I think one of the reasons you one of the ways you get ready is by you make a list of all of the outcomes that you've helped your customers achieve. And when you build that list out, then you go, wow. Wow, that, that's a pretty impressive list. I've got to get in touch with people. So that so that's so that's the first piece. Then the second piece is you 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 develop who is your ideal customer? Who's your ideal customer? And what is the outcome that you're gonna help them with? And you back upstream from that to then find where's your source of prospects going to come from. It, it really it, it's just kind of flipping. I I, I want to take the sales funnel mm-hmm. and flip it on end. I want to flip it on end. Because what I want to do is I want to put in a few good leads up yes. the top, but have them spray out down below, which is an unbelievable level of business. Yeah, and uh, I, I like the uh, I like the analogy you just used there because it's the opposite to what most people do. And I I, I ca- used to call it the feel good funnel. It's where you know your business may be really bad right now and nothing is closing, but you can look back to stage one and go, whoa. Look at all the leads back there. Now, in a couple of weeks, those leads will have evaporated because they weren't real. And I'm a great believer in putting less into the pipeline, but with a higher probability. And that takes that takes some nerve on the ha- on behalf of both sales managers and salespeople, right? Oh, yeah. And, and if you want leads, I happen to have an old copy of the Orange County telephone book. I'd be happy to give to you. So <laughs> happy to all sell. The leads, all the leads you could possibly <laughs> ask for. You're right. But see, this is the whole thing. Um, I don't know if it was Peter Drucker. I'm not quite sure who came up with it. But, but what you can measure is really what gets worked on. Now, mm-hmm. again, a lot of variations on that. But just because we can measure it, just because we can measure leads doesn't mean it's worth measuring. And that was another very famous, you know, you know, just because you can measure it doesn't mean it's worth measuring. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes that's where, you know what, let's not worry. I, I almost think sometimes measuring leads is like measuring clicks and likes on your yeah. social media <laughs> posts. Big deal. Yeah. yeah, and I think that is a trap that people fall into because at the end of the day, you can look back and you can say, oh, you know, leads are terrible this month. You know, this time last year, we had three times as many leads. But then you look back at the revenue and you go, well, actually, that didn't translate into revenue. So it really isn't a relevant factor. It's really the quality, right, at the end of the day. Yeah, I don't know about your bank, but my bank does not take leads. <laughs> I, 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 I try to deposit some leads, and I even tried to do it online, and right. it wouldn't and it would, would, would take it. So, you know, yeah. clearly it just yeah. doesn't work. Huh. Well, maybe you put the Orange County phone book on eBay and see. You might make a few bob on it. There's always somebody out there who buys it. You can say no, it's No, it's where I sale. bought <laughs> That's where I bought the Orange County phone, phone book. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about you know the you know, about pro- uh, prospecting. You have one uh, piece where you say, "Does anybody listen to voicemail anymore?" And let's face it, that's the other side of the coin. So you got some people on the phone today. Weren't that inspiring? We get how many email, how many voicemails a day? That aren't that inspiring. Inspiring. And now we've even got the transcribe feature. We don't even have to listen to them anymore, right? Yeah, that <laughs> transcribes. So think about that. That really pathetic voicemail <laughs> that that you left somebody now it comes across as a really pathetic text message. <laughs> whoa, 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 that's real. You know, that's creepy. But you're right. But that. But this is the world we live in. Uh, you know, you have to be prepared for your your phone call to go one of four ways. You know, the automated system where you get a whole mm-hmm. you know series of different you know, dial two, three, seven, eight, nine, you know, whatever you get the voicemail, you get the gatekeeper of one degree or another, or you get actually the decision maker. Uh, each one of those four, it requires a different strategy and you got to be prepared quickly. And, and that's, and that's the, the point of preparation I think is, is a really critical one. Cause I see this with both salespeople and, you know, when you're doing prospecting, even when you're doing selling, if you took, 100 salespeople right now, and you looked at their calendars, right, you would see all of their appointments in there pretty much, you're almost 100% guaranteed. But how many of them would you see prep time? 
set aside, actually on the calendar? I'm going to say it's a zero. Right. Zero. And yet, yeah. as you say, if you're not prepared, again, with 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 um, the prospect and the guy who called you and then said, can I speak to the owner of the sales center? <laughs> yeah. You said, you're speaking. And he was shocked. He didn't know what and to he do. He was shocked. He was shocked because he didn't he did not know what to do. You know, you know, what's funny, though. People get spooked by the word preparation. Mm -hmm. First of all, what is it? Five syllables, four syllables. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many it is. But anyway, it, 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 it people put read more into it. This one of the things that I love doing and one of the things I love sharing with groups is you divide your prospecting up by segment. You divide it up by industry type, you know, whatever. And what happens is you can get into a cadence. Mm -hmm. If I'm just dialing this industry today, yeah. if I'm just calling this um uh, type of company today. Uh, you, you, it, preparation doesn't have to be a massive amount because that's the other thing. People hide behind preparation. Right. Oh, you know, I, I, I just didn't have time to make calls today because I, I was preparing. <laughs> I was preparing. I was preparing. Well, guess what? You're going to prepare to tell you're bankrupt. So like you said, I mean, if you're if you're focusing on an industry or something like that, you can spend a little time preparing and then that preparation can work for you know, hundreds of calls, right? Yeah, it, it does. It, this is where I think you, you have to look at prospecting as being a muscle. Mm -hmm. Th think of prospecting as being a muscle. And uh, I, I work out every day. And if I don't work out, for a few days, my body just goes to pot. See, this is the same thing with prospecting. People people wonder, well, I have a hard time prospecting. Well, because you haven't done it in three weeks. Hello, cowboy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you 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 have to prospect regularly. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be daily, but at least you know it's every other day. Yeah, for sure. Um, here in California, there's a lot of people who've uh, gone to pot literally and given up their exercising, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> and same way with Canada. It's odd. <laughs> so um, you have also something where you say the value and pitfalls of social media, because that's a that's an ongoing debate, isn't it, about um, the role social media plays in prospecting and selling. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, I like social media, but social media has to earn its way into your calendar. Mm -hmm. You just don't sit there and say, I'm going to dedicate an hour a day, two hours a day to social media. Because let me tell you something. There's so much stuff out there. Uh, you, you have to – it has to earn your way in. And I, and I think the typical person really only has to spend maybe 10, 15 minutes a day on social media, period, period. Mm -hmm. Because here's the other, here's the other piece. Um, in the industries we play in, most people we deal with are probably on social media. And, and let's use LinkedIn because that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the B2B sure. tool. I do a lot of work in a lot of industries. LinkedIn? Really? What's that? <laughs> you see? Because people say, well, everybody's on social media. No, they're not on social mm -hmm. media. No, they're not. And oh, by the way, keep in mind, the people who are on social media, well, there's really three main types of people that are on social media. A, HR people. B, salespeople. Three, unemployed people. Okay. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, and you get some unemployed HR people who are trying to sell you something. So there Whoa, you go. Yeah. wow. Boom. <laughs> drop, the, drop the mic on. I, I like that. I drop the mic on that one. That's good. Wow. Hey, uh, let's... Let's turn that into a blog post and put it out on social media. <laughs> exactly. I'm I'm going to I'm going to dedicate my whole morning tomorrow to that. Um but it's but it's a it's a great point because I do think people overlook that sometimes. I mean, there are industries out there. For instance, I mean, if you're in if you're in financial services, um some of those have quite um and same in medic medical and so have quite uh, a lot of restrictions around it. So they don't want their people. They actually don't allow their people on it. So if you're going looking for information about somebody or an industry, Industry that actually doesn't allow people on social media. Well, that's a bit of a bit of a uh, useless exercise, isn't it? So I, yeah. I, I like and, your point. And, and there's a lot more industries out there that mm -hmm. have various regular, whether it be regulatory compliance, whether it be just a corporate legal issue or whatever. That they're not they're not out there. Yeah. So the same thing with um, with email. How does how does an email how does an email grab your attention? For instance, Mark, what, what's an email that you would open as opposed to all the other ones that you just ignore? Well, first of all, the email has to be smartphone friendly. Mm -hmm. This is one of the big problems. People people write these great. Oh, that email looks good. You know, they're writing it on their desktop. It looks really good, but it looks pretty pathetic on a smartphone. You see, 
there's two things that really come into play. Well, three things. One is what I call the one swipe rule. If, if I can't read that email on one swipe on my smartphone, I'm going to delete it. One swipe. Think about that. One swipe. But how you get to that is you got to have a subject line and the first 150 characters have got to be just grab you. If they don't grab you, you're going to delete. Yeah. We, we delete now. I, I've never seen studies on it. But I was at three parties the other night, and this is what I was told. So it's clearly third party <laughs> information. Bad, <laughs> bad, bad joke, bad joke. I love it. <laughs> anyway, hey, I think we're both on a roll here. Yeah, we are. Uh, way too much caffeine. Um, it, we delete emails so much faster from a smartphone than we do from a desktop. Mm. See? So you really got to make it smartphone friendly. And that that's that's an that's an interesting point is the fact that we've become so easy to ignore, right? That there's so many <laughs> there are so many ways to ignore somebody nowadays, and just getting their attention. As I said, because people are so so distracted that you got to cut through the noise really really quickly. Um, just just moving on to um, another part of your book, um, gatekeepers, right? That's still something that strikes fear into most people. Most people still don't know how to handle the gatekeeper. But so what's your what's your thoughts around getting past the gatekeeper? Well, first of all, view the gatekeeper not as the gatekeeper, but as the door opener. Mm -hmm. And and you know what's funny? That's just a little mental. But yep. it's amazing how it shifts your thinking when you are the door opener. And so what you have to do is you have to do two things. First of all, you got to respect them for who they are. And there's yeah. multiple levels of gatekeepers. See, this is the other problem. People lump gate gatekeepers are all alike. No, no. When I was in the third grade, let me tell you something. There were 12 girls in that class. They were not. Oh, okay. Well, I better <laughs> shut up. Okay. Okay. We, we won't go down that path. But anyway, people are all different. Gatekeepers are all different. You have the administrative gatekeeper who clearly is clearing the deck for that senior level mm -hmm. person. You have another gatekeeper door opener that really is the decision maker, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they're the ones that actually make the decision. And there's another gatekeeper slash door opener that's just, well, they're just answering the phones. And again, there's different strategies for each one of those. I love reaching out to administrative door openers on Friday afternoons. I love reaching out to them on Friday afternoons. Why? Because they're working. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting? They're going to respect you because you're working. Mm -hmm. See? So again, it's using little windows of time to try to break through. Again, it's the right question at the right time to the right person. Yeah. And I like what you said is not to see them as uh, in, a, in a negative sense, but see them in a positive sense and see that because somebody said recently, I mean, the fact is the gatekeeper, yes, they're trying to keep a lot of people out, but they're also trying to find the right people to let in. Right, right. They they will let the right people in, but you've got to earn the right to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and just the last thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, I like this thing about, is it worth even trying to reach the C-suite? Because that's always like the holy grail and people would say, oh, you know, I sell to the C-suite or I can get to the C-suite. But that's not always, I mean, it's nice and some, and sometimes it's the right thing, but it's not always, right? Oh, it's not always. And and people say, well, just go to the top, go to the mm -hmm. top. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you can just waste your, waste so much time and effort to get to the top. It just doesn't make sense. So I say go in, go in one or two levels above where you think you should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. That, that's really what I say. Just go in one or two levels above. Don't, don't race for this. Now, if you get, if that in, is the C-suite, that's fine. But then remember, C-suite plays by a different set of rules mm -hmm. then. Everybody else. And again, we, we could we could do a whole mm -hmm. wow, we could go for hours talking yeah. about that. Good. And we but, may and we may come back and do that another time, which would be good. But I like but I, I and I think it goes back to the point you made earlier. And I think this is critical if you're selling um, today, you know, and certainly if you're in B2B or complex selling is you have to identify all the different people who are involved, who can influence the sale and understand what they are doing and how you need to interact with each them individually. Yeah. And you know what? I, let me throw out a magic question. I love asking this early on in the prospecting phase. The question is this, how have you made decisions like this in the past? Excellent. And, and, and I like that because I'm listening for dates. I'm listening for people. I'm listening for nuances, processes. And if I ask that early on in the prospecting phase, I get truth. See, if I wait and ask that in the negotiation phase, I get bold faced lies. See, that, that's why I love prospecting because that's when I get truth. As soon as you got this level of confidence, 
it, 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 it's that point of confidence and trust mm-hmm. before the proposal gets put on the table, then boom. Yeah, I love I love that. That's a that's a great question, and I think that's something that uh, fantastic takeaway for everybody today is you know ask them how have you made purchasing decisions like this in the past because I mean that's going to save you so much trouble. And as you say, is they're lo- more they're more than likely to tell you exactly how they've done it in the past, which gives oh, you yeah. so much information. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. All right, well, listen, Mark, this has been great. Mark Hunter, The Sales Hunter, the book we were talking about is High, uh, high Profit Prospecting, but Mark has a bunch of other books. Um, so in the last couple of moments, why don't you tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you? Well, I go to thesaleshunter.com. That's mm-hmm. the best way. And yes, Hunter is my real last name. People <laughs> always ask me, well, what was your name before you changed it to Hunter? <laughs> it was Farmer. No, no, no. It, you know, it's, the, it's the sales hunt. I'm doing not too bad from a backup office, backup mm-hmm. computer, backup, yeah, backup every. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine was bronze when I first started. And then I. Oh, there, there. oh. <laughs> hey, it's okay. You probably got a kid named Silver, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to work myself I'm trying to work myself up to platinum, but I've got a way to go. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. No, really it's thesaleshunter.com and of course the book High Profit Prospecting. And the other book High Profit Selling, right? High Profit Selling, yeah. yeah. And another one coming shortly and another one after that. Excellent. But- well, well, we'll come back and talk about that uh, when your next book comes out. But hopefully before that, we'll talk about maybe C-suite selling. So listen, Mark, pleasure talking to you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Great, great selling.